Albert Pike was one of the most colorful characters in American history. It is said that he was born on December 29, 1809 in Boston, was the eldest son of uh, six children born to Benjamin, Sarah, Andrew Pike. He studied at Harvard and later served as Brigadier General of the Confederate Army. After the Civil War, Pike was found guilty of treason and jailed, only to be pardoned by President Andrew Jackson on April 2, 1866, who met with him the next day at the White House. On June 20th, 1867, Scottish Rite officials conferred upon Johnson a 32nd degree masonry, Freemasonry degrees. Pike was said to be a genius, able to read and write 16 languages. He was one of the founding fathers of the head of the ancient accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, being the Grand Commander of North America Freemasonry from 1859 and retained that position until his death in 1891. In 1869, he was the top leader of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Pike was said to be a Satanist who indulged in the occult, and he apparently possessed a bracelet which he used to summon Lucifer, with whom he had constant communication. He was the Grand Master of a Luciferian group known as the Order of the Palladium, or of a Sovereign Council of Wisdom, it's also been called, which had been founded in Paris in 1737. Now, General Albert Pike was the only Confederate general with a statue on federal property in Washington, D.C. He was honored not as a commander or even as a lawyer, but as Southern Regional Leader of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. The statue stands on a pedestal near the foot of Capitol Hill between the Department of Labor building and the Municipal building between 3rd and 4th Streets on D Street Northwest. <laughs> now, I tell you all of this because it is said that he received a vision from his mentor, Mr. Lucifer, I guess, on August 15, 1871. And William Guy Carr, former intelligence officer in the Royal Canadian Navy, wrote a book called Satan, Prince of This World, in which he gives this information. He said that he received this information from a book written by Cardinal uh, Caro Rodriguez in Santiago, Chile, who wrote in 1925 a book called The Mystery of Freemasonry Unveiled. And in this book, in 1925, it is said that he wrote a letter to a man named Mazzini in which he described this dream. And in the dream, he predicted three world wars. The first world war, he said, must be brought about, and I'm quoting from Albert Pike. The first world war must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the British and German empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Now, students of history will know that Otto von Bismarck forged a certain alliances between 1871 and 1898 uh, which brought about this war, this World War I. And Otto von Bismarck here says that he was a co-conspirator with Albert Pike, and he was the one instrumental in bringing about the First World War. Well, that's the First World War. Then he dreams that there must be, he is given in this visionary dream, a Second World War. Now remember, this was in 1925 that it became public in this book written by... Uh, uh, by a cardinal uh, from Santiago, Chile, Rodriguez. He says, quote, The Second World War must be fo fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism must be, will be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, 
which would then be re uh, restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Well, there are some who may argue that the terms Nazism and Zionism were not known in 1871. Uh, you should remember, however, that the Illuminati invented both of these movements. In addition, communism as an ideology and as a coined phrase originates in France during the Revolution. In, eight, in 1785, Restif coined the phrase four years before the Revolution broke out. Restif and Bebeuf, uh, in turn, were influenced by Rosé, as was the most famous conspirator of them all, Adam Weisopt. Then he has this vision, in this vision, not only one world war and two world wars, but here comes the third world war. He says, and I quote, The third world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. Yeah, that's what he says. The war, this was 1925. Please understand that. Uh, at least 1925. It may go all the way back to 1871, as is purported to do, but at least it was written in a book and published in 1925. So he says, back after World War I was just over a few years, and before World War II even started, he's now thinking about this Third World War, and it says that it will uh, be caused by the differences between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. That's what it says. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm in which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin and savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. So he's against Christianity and he's against atheism. They're supposed to fight each other to the death, you see. Then, he says, everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and, and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowledge where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer." What he says, brought about finally in, uh, brought, uh, brought finally out in the public view. So he's saying that Lucifer will finally make himself, you know, the, the good guy. He's going to save the world from these atheists who don't believe in deity and from these Christians who believe in the good God. Well, so it says, this manifestation will result in the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Well, I don't know if it's true, but I can tell you that it sure has played into what is being carried on in um, the Middle East today. And it looks like ev everything from World War I and World War II with the development of the State of Israel and with the Zionist movement and the communist movement and the atheist movement and the peppering down of persecution on the Christians of this world, it looks like that may be Lucifer's attempt at annihilation of us all um, so that Lucifer will appear in the form, of course, of what the Bible calls the Antichrist and establish peace on earth for mankind. <laughs> I got news for all those Illuminatists. Their little plan will only last for three and a half years and will be destroyed by the second coming of Jesus Christ himself.